Beginning is as simple and complex as choosing a path and trusting that it will connect to all other paths. I suppose I could begin by telling you that there's an invisible world woven into the fabric of our daily lives. Don't go looking for this invisible world because you won't find it. Because it's invisible. <laughs> I suppose I could begin by showing you something that you can see. Like, like the people. Let's begin with the people. These are the people. Or I could begin with the time and place. Our story spans from November 9th, 1964 to November 9th, 1965 in New York City. Or I, I could begin with the structure. Tonight's story schools around a triangle composed of Two women and one man. But, uh, this being a musical story and all, I guess we have to begin with the guitar. But in order to reach the guitar, we must first attend a funeral. On November 9th, 1964, deep in the outer reaches of Brooklyn, Cecily Smith, wife and mother, passed away in her sleep when her heart suddenly stops. For days, her widowed husband can't take his hand off his own heart. He presses on it and says her name. So sweet. At the hospital. At home. On the walk to the cemetery. Long wide stretches of the ordinary As this life rolls on From the cradle to the cemetery Just get through until tomorrow's dawn Then, then a burst Now 
mountain of old dusty boxes filled with yellowed papers and discovers a guitar. Mom had a guitar. Yes. Did she play? No. <laughs> she always wanted to learn. Can I have it? Sure. Harold bids his father goodbye. He walks 15 blocks to a bus, to a train, to another train that will take him home to his fifth floor walk up apartment in Manhattan. And while Mr. McClams is in his apartment playing his wife's record, Harold is at home playing his mother's guitar. And less than five months later, he finds himself on stage in a small city club. song that I wrote about my favorite animal, the sea turtle. See, these sea turtles nested for ages at a beach in southern Florida. I can't hear some music. No, and when the eggs would hatch, the babies would crawl towards the sun to get to the ocean. But after a while, a highway was built on the opposite side and it needed to be lit up. So when the babies hatched, they start crawling towards the wrong light, the wrong horizon. My point is, I think I might be a sea turtle. That's it, then you die! I'm about to start. Where was I? Telling us about how you're a turtle. Right. I might be. I don't know. And that's the point of the song. Am I a sea turtle? Am I heading for the highway instead of the sea? I hope you like it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to do. Maybe I'm a turtle too. Is the highway my way or do I want to see a blue? Maybe I'm a turtle too. Help me out, I beg you. If the highway I pursue, I can be so free on a freeway or avenue. If I am the end of a Oh, please. Toss and toss, drifting and stuck. Days of phase and out of luck. Is it sea or is it land? Spinning circles in the sand.
A guitar? We'll go five months back. Back to the first day of summer. Which is the hottest day of the year. And you see, it's especially so if you live in Linden, Hill City, South Dakota. <laughs> Ever since Daphne was a little girl, she'd always dreamed of being a Broadway star. <laughs> Her main setback was that she was born in Hill City, South Dakota. A town with a population of less than 1,000. And so it came as no surprise when one day she told her mother, I'm moving to New York City. Oh, well, you've been the star of every Hill City community theater production. I reckon you're ready for Broadway. <laughs> Can I take the Chrysler? The Imperial? That was your father's car. God rest his soul. I still remember the day he bought it. I wanted black, but he insisted on sea foam green. Come on, please. You can take the car to you to New York. As long as you take your sister with you. Uh, of course. I was already planning on it. Daphne's older sister Miriam has spent the past ten years working at the Hill City Pancake House. Great, Miriam. Of your life? Yes. No! <laughs> Come on, Miriam, you know you love a good adventure. You just want someone to cook you dinner. That's not at all. <laughs> You're also great at giving pep talks. Well, I have always wanted to see an ocean. <laughs> hey, you can navigate maps with the leading immediately. Wait! I need the night to pack. Oh, fine. The next morning, the girls say goodbye to their mother. I've got a goodbye present for you, Mom. You're lucky, Ren. Won't you need it in the Big Apple? No, I want you to have it. Well, that's strange. <laughs> there, can we go now? Hey, we'll miss you, Mom. Mm. Don't get too lonely. <laughs> oh, I'll be fine. <laughs> Here we go! Goodbye, South Dakota! But as soon as they cross the state line... I can't do this! What was I thinking? I'll never make it in New York! Of course you will! You're a star! And he'll see! You're a star! I'm all talk! You're a star! See, I told you you were good at giving pep talks.
No. I can't give up. All the stars who made it to the top are the ones who did it stop. I might read a book. 
Both of his daughters, but Daphne could never sit still long enough to take things in. Ah, so boring. <laughs> Miriam, on the other hand, would sit painfully for hours each night and count the stars. 141, 142. Until one day, her mother told her, <coughs> Your father is sick. Don't tell him I told you. That evening, Miriam's father finds her crying out in the backyard. <coughs> I see your mother told you.
go to New York. It'll be ridiculous. It's just... Well, that's ominous. <laughs> <laughs>
It's what you do to me. 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 It's what you
can't wait to meet your ghost sister. <laughs> She's not a ghost. Daphne's right. Miriam is not a ghost, but for the past few weeks, she's felt like one. There are no trains or buses that go anywhere near the Greasy Spoon Cafe, so you can imagine Miriam's horror when one night she looks out the window and asks, Where's the Chrysler? I sold it. I needed the money for headshots. Unbelievable. <laughs> After that, Miriam is forced into the kind of commute that drives many people out of the city that never sleeps. A train to a train to a bus to a 15 block walk and what was once refill? Great. Becomes refill? Great. Until the very same day that Daphne. Yes! <laughs> Daphne? Yes! Miriam's exhausted from you because the better of her somewhere in the middle of her 15 block walk her mind strays and her feet follow until Where am I? She takes a direction and walks. For a few minutes, she sees it, glimmering in the moonlight like, like a sea foam green garage. The Chrysler! Miriam rushes to the car that was once her father's, and then her mother's, and then hers, and discovers it now belongs to. You! <laughs> you. Oh, I told you we'd meet it again sooner or later. <laughs> You're lost. I'll draw you up a map. Step into my hall. No, sis, honey. I, I don't really have time. Yes, you do. I just have some else to feed. No, you don't. <laughs> I don't know why I'm here. None of us do. Now have a seat. You said you had a map? Yes, a map of your destiny. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to see it? I guess. Great. Two dots. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, I just have to wait till I get into the zone. Which could take up to like 20 minutes. Oh, my Lord! <laughs> <laughs> the ball <laughs> is flowing. <laughs> Oh, now that's just crazy! <laughs> what is it? I'm seeing that. <laughs> the good news is, you are about to meet your true love. I cannot? Yes. <laughs> and he has music inside of him that will fit together perfectly with the music inside of you. Like two. Puzzle piece. Puzzle piece. Yes. Puzzle piece. You are destined to be with each other. You will feel first in your heart, then in your bones. And once you meet, your passion and love affair will begin. That sounds great. Mm -hmm. Except the bad news is, <laughs> you will be completely honest. Oh. But then the good news is, this love affair will bring you rapturous joy. Oh! But then the bad news is, this love affair will bring you torturous guilt. Oh! But then the good news is, you're going to meet this man, your soulmate, tonight. Oh! But then the bad news is, you're wearing that. <laughs> I'm trying to concentrate. <laughs> I've never felt tonight as strong as this before. The air is humming and an electric buzz. I had a premonition you'd come through my door. Do you know why? Why I don't know? Because the moon is full outside, and when the moon is full, you know that crap is gonna hit the 
Now concentrate and focus on your energy as I reveal your fate in life. I'm seeing the man. Oh, not to what? That's fine. You leave up all the clothes right and spin, 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 then run, run, run. Stop and listen to a wish from deep within. Somehow you know which hope is right. These instructions are kind of vague. The rope will fork, and you won't know what to do. But don't be scared, you don't have more to go. Just look above, and you see it in direction. What? I don't know, but somehow you will know. And this map above you will lead you directly <laughs> to your soul, baby. Now listen to me carefully, and I will tell you what it is I see. There are three, there are three signs I see. Now listen closely to the words I say. There are three, there are three signs I see. Quick, attention, my favorite. The first sound comes in the form of a question. What does it look like when time stops? I don't know, but somehow the set comes in the form of numbers. Five, two, seven. Five, two, seven. Five, two, Oh, wait, I don't have a cup. Oh, sorry, sorry. It's 
fine. Uh, I'm actually waiting for somebody. Two people, actually. Oh. <laughs> Coffee while you wait? Sure. Uh, can I have a cup? Please. <laughs> <laughs> Miriam returns to the kitchen to collect her thoughts. Is the prophecy real? <coughs> And if it is, how can I be sure that this man waiting for coffee in a cup <laughs> The signs. Hey, do you know what it looks like when time stops? Is that a joke? No. <laughs> uh, well, maybe it looks like this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stops. <laughs> After a minute, Miriam returns to try again. Refill? Sure. Great. <laughs> Do the numbers five two seven mean anything to you? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> After a few more minutes, Miriam returns to try again. Refill? Sure. Great. Since June. 
I grew up right around the corner. This is my dad's favorite place. He always orders the same thing. Two eggs, sunny side up, slice of cantaloupe, slice of white bread toast, okay. slice of rye toast, half, half a grapefruit, and a cup of coffee. coffee. You're a herald! And you're Miriam. How did you, how did you? It's a sign. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I have to say something. Tonight, I met this psychic gypsy, and she told me I, she found a map in her crystal ball and told me it would lead me to my soulmate. Yeah, you and so, I followed the map and just me here. And she gave me three signs so I know when I met the one. The first question, what does it look like when time stops? The second, <coughs> there's five, two, seven. And then the third sign was a melody. La da 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 da. Yeah, I know. And I don't know why you think you're in the diner right now, but whatever the reason is, that's the real reason. Because the real reason you're here is to meet me. You're my soulmate, I think. Sorry, I'm late. The rehearsal ran way longer than expected. Oh, good, you two found each other. Harold, Miriam, Miriam, Harold. See, I told you she wasn't a ghost. This is the guy I was telling you about. You're... You didn't tell her, did you? You didn't tell me that she worked here. I thought I did. What's going on? Miriam, I got engaged, and I also got cast as the lead in a musical. It's like all the stars are aligned for me. <laughs> Miriam, I'm talking about stars. She's really into that kind of stuff, right, Miriam? Right. Now, I know what you're thinking. They've only been dating a, a month. <laughs> that seems <laughs> awfully fast, but when you meet the right person, you just know, you know? Right? Right. We picked out a date. May 27! 5, 2, 7. That's another way to say it, yes. <laughs> 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 Believe I need honor? Yes, of course! Believe it or not, this is not the worst part of Miriam's night. <laughs> After Harold and Daphne leave... Bye! Uh, nice meeting you. Miriam tries to cheer herself up. I can't feel awful while serving a waffle. <laughs> but it doesn't work, and as 7 a.m. rolls around, Miriam's shift ends, and she heads home, head down, shoulders slumped. So it comes as a real surprise when she walks right into Miriam! Oh, no. Ooh. Ooh. I've been looking for you for hours. You have? Yes, yeah, you are a hard woman to find. <laughs> but I just worked down the street. And you're a psychic? <laughs> there was more. You see, after you left the ball, the lit up and started glowing again, revealed the second part of your prophecy. You will have a love affair. And then you will have a great fall. <laughs> Huh? A great fall! Oh, a great fall like in the season? Like, mmm, smell those leaves, what a great fall. No, that is not what I mean. <laughs> I'm afraid you have what's known in the biz as a mountain life. A life that goes up, 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 and then down. No! Yes. <laughs> is there any way to stop this from happening? I'll tell you for another dog. <laughs> no. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> a great fall. A great fall is headed for you. I assure you there is no escape. A great fall. A great fall. A great fall.
circumstances can she ever see or talk to Harold ever again. Unfortunately, this becomes difficult when... Will you go see Harold and talk to him? Why does Daphne make this request? To find out, we have to journey all the way back from the winter months. First, there's January, when Joey realized that everything he's written is... Wrong. All wrong. So he disappears to a small office for several hours and emerges with... More scenes. And at lunch, Daphne heads to Sandwich's Sandwiches, where... Made your lunch. Great. Harold, this is Joey. Joey Storms. Help me plan. I'm writing a song. Want to hear? Yes, but I gotta go to rehearsal. Bye. Bye. And at night? I don't want to fall behind on the wedding. Can you hire a florist? I trust you. No problem. Then there's February, when... More scenes. And... Made to lunch. Great. Hey, Henry. It's terrible. <laughs> My song's gonna be about a sea turtle. Wanna hear? Yes, but I gotta go. Bye. Bye. And? Can you book a church and pick out a cake flavor? I trust you. No problem. Then there's March. When? More. Third. Herman. Harold. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Can you book a band? What kind? I tr trust you. Oh, wait. Harold will have an opinion about this. <laughs> okay, let me know what he says. I can't. We're rehearsing around the clock. Will you go see Harold and talk to him? And that's how we land smack dab on April 1st. Exactly three months to the day from... You're my soulmate, I think. When? up with 
his ingenious idea. I know you feel the same way I do. Mom. 